Okay guys, so we're gonna test this 110 millimeter uh, William Optics Magress against the Takahashi 102 millimeter uh, FS. Now, it's only eight millimeter difference, so let's get to it. Okay, and I have, I try to do the power as best as I can. Now, it's a little tricky sometimes, but uh, on the Takahashi, we're gonna try 33 power. On the Magrez or the William Optics, it's gonna be 36 power. Only three power difference, so that should be fine. Then we're gonna be doing on the Takahashi 93 power, and then 98 power on the William Optics, so that's pretty close. And the only thing I can get kind of close is on the Takahashi 241, which is above the uh, two times per inch uh, aperture. Uh, so that one, the Takahashi, if we just go by the theoretical power, that's 102, we're gonna be doing 241 power. So basically about 40 power over the maximum. And then on the William Optics, um, 110 should be 220 and we're gonna be doing 252. So it's only gonna be about 11 power difference in, in, in these two, which is, I would say, pretty close, as close as I can get it. Anyway, we're gonna do it. So we're gonna be taking a look at Saturn, which is perfect. And I think uh, Jupiter's only about 10 degrees uh, from the horizon. So by the time we get there, it should be hopefully at about 25. I, the degrees should be okay-ish. Okay, so let's get to it. Okay guys, so let's start with the Takahashi. Let me find Saturn. Okay, there I go. I found it. Uh, let me lock it down. Now remember, at 32, 34 power, 36 power, you know, I think it's virtually, well, we'll, we'll see. It's going to be, Saturn's going to be small. That's what I was going to try to say. Okay, it's sharp, and I can see Definitely Triton in that eyepiece. And now we're, let's use the Magres. It's almost in the center of the field of view. Okay. Again, it's very tiny. I see, sorry, Titan in there. I'm gonna go back. You know what, guys, in this small of power, I really don't see any difference. So we gotta bump it up to the next power. Okay, so now we're doing 6.7 on the William Optics, and eight on the Takahashi. And that gets us very close in power. Yep, yeah, right at the bottom, but it's still in the field of view. And remember too, in 90-ish power, whatever we're at at these ones, is not really high power. We call it like medium-ish, but it's big enough to see detail. Wow, okay, that looks very, very sharp for 93 power. Last year, my one of the buttons wasn't working, and my good friend Jack, who's on the channel, has probably been with me almost from the beginning, sent me a new hand control, and now this second one's giving me the button. Okay, you know what, that's a pretty good image. Now, I've only let these guys cool down for about 30 or 35 minutes. Now, they're only doublets, so that they're not too big. They're not too heavy. Okay, I can see a couple stars here, or a couple moons that I cannot see on this one, which is a little bit weird because this one is actually eight millimeter diameter difference. The image on this one's not too bad. It's not too bad, but it's not quite as sharp. I do see Titan. Okay, I think I just glimpsed the other couple moves, but it's not as clear. Okay, so the chart is saying with a 13 millimeter Nagler and a two times Barlow gets us the high power. That's 
252 pattern. It's weird. 13 angler. It by itself is I guess so. I'm gonna double check. I just wanna be sure. You know, I don't wanna make a mistake here, so let's see, that was um, so the William Optics is 655 millimeters. Okay, so 655 divided by 13 Nagler is 50 power, which is correct. Now if I go 13 divided by two, we get 6.5. 655 divided by 6.5 equals 100 power. What's going on? I think I know what I did. It's the five times power mate. So if I go 13 divided by 5 equals 2.6. Now 655 divided by 2.6 gets us that 251. Aha, I'm using a wrong bar. Mode. See, I, I knew something wasn't quite right. Uh, so instead of the two times bar, I need the five times power rate. Now this gives us 252 power. 251.9, but that's basically 252. Okay, still in the field of view, but all the way at the bottom. Saturn is actually pretty big and you can see the ring. I cannot say I see the Cassini division at all. I see Titan. Image is decent. Most people I think would like that, even if new people. It's not bad. Okay, now what was the other one? Takahashi was 6.7 ultra wide, 4,000 meat, with the two times bar. The William Optics needs the five times. Okay, I'm just gonna take a quick peek again back in here. So it's ingrained, so I'm looking. Okay, that way. Okay, and it's still in the eyepiece, thanks to the tracking. Okay, now that's a good view. Wow, oh my gosh. Yeah, I see the Cassini division. Wow, the view is big. Okay, do you guys remember when I <coughs> did that video of the my Takahashi 102 TSA against the Skywatcher Evo Star 100 F9. Okay, the Skywatcher is pretty decent because remember it's F9 and it's a 53 lens, and <coughs> this seems to be almost the same. That the image, I know I'm taking a few seconds, a dozen seconds is big difference. It's not a little difference. This one seems to have like a little glow around it. I guess that's the color fringing. The rings are not like sharp around the planet. It just has more fuzz to it. It's just not crystal clear. This one is looking, looking at a photograph. That's how sharp it is. And we're at 241 power, I believe. 241, so it's going about, you know, 39 power past its theoretical limit. Both of these only had about, well, maybe up to now, it's about 40 minutes, 45 minutes of cooling. But when I started this video, it was only about 30 minutes. But no, it's not a little difference, like 10 or 15%. This is more in the 30 to 40% difference. Yeah, it's still in the eyepiece. No. I'm going to even dare to say at least 50% more crystal clear because the ring around the planet is clear. Even the ring on the planet that goes on the surface through it, I can easily define it. I can see the Cassini division, which is hard now, and I can't see any of that there. No, it's, you know, I'm going to say 50% better, 40 to 50. It's one of those, again, when I did that video and I said it was a huge difference. Now, in a small uh, power, it was kind of minor, or I didn't distinguish anything. In the medium one, I saw some difference, and then in the high power, there's a big difference. I can see an equatorial belt on the north side. Now, because the image flips, remember with the diagonal, it's probably in the uh, southern uh, hemisphere, but 
Yeah, and I can see some purple fringing. And I guess that's what you get with the 51 lens and this short, but... Okay. Okay, guys, so to make things a little easier for me, I'm only using an 18 millimeter eyepiece and then I'm blowing it up with the cell phone, which I don't always like to do. So that's nine times the maximum my cell phone can do. And that's nine times. Uh, I prefer to use real power with like bar. At least it gives you an idea uh, how sharp it is, but it's not even as clear as I see it in the eyepiece. Anyway, guys, that's the best I could do right now. It's not nine times on the screen. Anyway, I hope I can fix it on the screen, but that's 7.6 times. You can just I see the difference, how clear it is. I hope that helps. Problem is on this guy, this hand control, this bottom button doesn't even click. The other three do. So I gotta take it apart and see what's going on there. So it's not, I can't use it. Uh, it's actually not too bad when I do visual, but in the cell phone, with a combination, you know, and the cell phone has a small pixel, it's not the greatest. Let's go over to Jupiter and see what happens if the same thing is. Okay, so Jupiter is high enough now. It's about almost 20, 25 degrees worth of the horizon. It's not the greatest, but you know, it's okay, I guess. Yeah, it's kind of small. And then what was the, so on the William Optics was an 18 millimeter and that one was a 24. So again, sh pretty sharp. There's uh, one, two, four moons on one side today. And two of them are almost like on top of each other. So that's kind of neat. 6.7 gives us 98 power on here. Okay guys, here's 98 power. Again, you can see on the William Optics, the two banding, the two main equatorial banding. You can see the four moons in one shot at 98 power. It's not crystal clear. It's okay-ish. Let's put the 8.8 .8 in this one. Okay, it's a little bit clearer. It's not super, I mean, it's not so high past the horizon, 25 degrees or whatever. So it looks good, but you know, not perfect. Okay, William Optics now, 252 power, whatever, 252. You know, I'm not so impressed with Jupiter compared to Saturn. I think it was a bit better. Jupiter is more like a low contrast, so eh, it's okay. But, eh, not so impressed with that. It's like I would give it like a 50% so-so. Okay, I'm not so impressed with that one too. So it's probably due to Jupiter being a little too low in the sky. Uh, probably it would have to get another, I don't know, 15 degrees. So it's probably, yeah, it's probably about, this is 25 degrees. It's only probably about 23. It's not high enough, I guess, for good planetary viewing. So unfortunately, um, it, it's a little bit better in here than this one, but in both of them, I'm not super happy with it. You know, just so it might be due to Jupiter not being high enough up there. Anyway, guys, let's go inside and talk about uh, this fun testing and what do I think. Anyway, guys, like, comment, and subscribe. For you guys that's been on the channel with me all this time, I appreciate it. If you guys know anybody getting into uh, astronomy, send them my link. If you're on any of the forums and somebody's maybe asked uh, a question that I have any video to, I would appreciate it if you share the link. And um, I do have a members uh, videos now, which means uh, once a month I put up one video only for the members that are subscribed. It's only 99 cents a month, so it's really not uh, that high at all appreciate it and if you guys don't want to not a problem anyway guys uh why not you why not me okay guys so the conclusion is the takahashi even though 
it's eight millimeters smaller, 102 millimeters versus 110 millimeter Magrez William Optics still did way better. And I'm not just talking about a little uh, difference now, 10 or 15, 20%. It's probably, in, especially in the medium power, it didn't see any difference much in the small power, but the medium, especially that high power, it's a big difference. So it's not 15, 20%. My guess is at least 40 to 50% image quality is better. Now, both of them are doublets. The Magrez is eight millimeter diameter more, which you know ends up being quite a bit difference, 102 to 110 millimeter. It should have better resolution. But anyway, the, the Magrez is a 51 glass and it's at practically almost F6, 5.95, so almost F6. The Takahashi is at f8. It's a also a doublet, but it does have a fluorite glass, which is equivalent to a 53 glass. Um, so with a better glass and that f8, it makes a huge difference. Now, there is one thing that the William Optics Magrez is much better than the Takahashi. I think is the focuser is a lot better. But as far as the image quality and that thing, now saying that, I do think the Magrez or the William Optics would probably do pretty good on you know the deep sky stuff where it was intended to do. Like a galaxies and nebulas and clusters. But again, the only thing might be slightly, I'm thinking, is because the stars are not gonna be pinpoint. Again, it's everything is based on price, of course. And if you want something pretty decent uh, with a sliding dew shield, a decent focuser, you know, a semi medium ish, like 110 millimeter, it could suit your needs. But on planetary, big difference in those two. But anyway, it was fun just to check out what happens. And uh, that's it. Okay, guys, take care.